coverage you can count on. This is Fox 2 News at 9 a.m. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to you. We made it to the end of the work week, and we're waking up to plenty of cloud cover ahead, but no rain for today, so that's the good news. I'll let you know how warm we'll get and what you can expect for the weekend. An officer was stabbed this morning in the 5400 block of Genevieve Avenue in North St. Louis, and the suspect had been shot. We'll walk you through what happened. Missouri is one step closer to legalizing sports gaming, and you bet some fans are happy about that. The move to put the state on equal footing with others like Illinois. And St. Louis gets a taste of soccer. We preview tonight's big, shop, big soccer showcase put on by St. Louis City SC. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, March 25th. Welcome to Fox 2 News at 9 a.m. I'm Kim Hudson. Meteorologist Lynn Trung is live on the Lakeside Renovation and Design Weather Deck, and she's letting us know what our weekend's looking like. Good morning, Lynn. And good morning, Kim. It's a nice dry start out here this morning. I'm outside here in the weather deck. We have lots of clouds, but no rain this morning. It's been pretty damp lately, and today it's going to be a nice dry day. It's going to stay dry through the weekend as well. It is chilly out here, though. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s right now at the 9 o'clock hour. As we take a look here uh, from our Renewal by Anderson webcam, looking out towards Lambert Airport, lots of clouds, but no rain falling from these clouds. So it's going to be a dry day. We do have some rain well off to our east here around the Chicago area, but we are remaining dry for today. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s right now, 42 degrees degrees in Hazelwood, 41 in Edwardsville, 42 in St. Louis, and currently 39 degrees out the door in Union and in Litchfield. So 30s and 40s, winds picking up right now out of the west in Alton around 14 miles an hour, 17 in Litchfield, 13 in Vandalia, and the winds will be on the strong side throughout the day today. So if you're going to go out for that walk or that jog throughout uh, this Friday, it's going to be dry, but it's going to be windy. So if you don't mind the wind all that much, it should be fine today. We stay uh, partly cloudy through the rest of the afternoon hours after the, through the rest of the day after a cloudy morning temperatures in the upper 50s at 1 and warming up to about 60 degrees later this afternoon so that's a lot milder than our high of 46 degrees yesterday but we do have some cooler temperatures for the weekend I'll let you know what those temperatures look like and when we'll see a warm up all right, Lynn, thank you so much. St. Louis police say an officer's vest protected him during a stabbing, but it led to the suspect getting shot. Fox 2's Ala Araby is in North St. Louis, and she tells us more about what happened this morning. Just before 4 a.m. this morning, officers responded to a domestic disturbance at the 5400 block of Genevieve Avenue. Police say a mother wanted her adult child removed from her home. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs bedroom where the 40 year old man attacked an officer with a kitchen knife. He stabbed him in the vest, but it did not penetrate his skin. That officer is doing OK. The man went to stab him a second time, but another officer shot him in the torso. A, a second officer, a closer officer who was a, a younger officer. He's only been on for about a few weeks. He come out of the cabin a few weeks ago. He fired one shot at the suspect as he was attempting to um, stabbed the officer a second time. Uh, the, all resistance ceased at that point. The suspect was taken into custody. He is critical, unstable condition at an area hospital. The knife was recovered. And the officer who was stabbed had been on the force for 12 years. The officer who shot the suspect had been on the force for a few weeks. In North St. Louis, I'm Ella Araby. In other news, here in St. Louis, more support for Ukraine. There's a benefit concert tonight at 7 at Pops Blue Moon. St. Louis musicians sing out for freedom. The concert benefits the World Central Kitchen. Yesterday, President Biden announced the U.S. will accept 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Many people in the St. Louis area are ready to open their homes to those survivors. That includes St. Mary's Assumption Ukrainian Catholic Church in South County. Uh, we've been... Uh, overwhelmed uh, with phone calls and texts and emails uh, of just ordinary folks uh, willing to take uh, someone and put them up for a while in their home. The church welcomed other Ukrainian immigrants in the past year. Many of them still have relatives and friends in Ukraine. Fox 2 is your local election headquarters. St. Louis City election commissioners test their voting equipment. The law requires this systems check. It will make sure the machines work on Election Day, April 5th. A bill to allow sports gaming passes in the Missouri House, it now heads to the Missouri Senate. 
Missouri casinos and pro sports teams support the plan. Fans and casino owners say the state is losing millions of dollars. Betters go to Illinois where sports gaming is legal. So to use a sports analogy, we're about at halftime in this process. We're very appreciative to the House in Missouri for passing uh, this piece of legislation at a vote of about, I think, 115 to 33. So I think that just shows that there's momentum uh, for the legalization of sports betting during this session. If it's responsible, then I don't see a problem with it. I love it. I love it. I think uh, it'll bring more revenue in the state of Missouri. Our neighbors in Iowa and Arkansas also allow sports gaming. Kansas does not. Well, a big soccer showcase comes to St. Louis tonight. It's the first ever MLS Next Pro match for St. Louis City 2. Fox 2's Patrick Clark has a preview. Thursday afternoon in the downtown West neighborhood, construction continuing on Major League Soccer's state-of-the-art Centene Stadium. St. Louis City SC set to make their spring 2023 debut in the MLS. It's going to you know, transform that part of the city, and I think it's really a true representation of what the Taylor family, how they think about the city, how much they love this city, they love this region, and it's their way in many ways to, to, to give back. But the newest professional sports franchise to join the St. Louis ranks will begin play Friday night in Midtown at Herman Stadium on the St. Louis University campus where an estimated 7,000 fans are expected. One way to think about it is it's our version of AAA baseball or the AHL or the G League. It's soccer and soccer is different. And it's, this is a competitive league, this is a professional league. And each team is gonna play 24 regular season games. The team will host five home games at Herman Stadium on the SLU campus and six home games at Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville at the Ralph Cordy Stadium. In downtown West, Patrick Clark. Fox 2 News. Well, someone is tired of the geese near public buildings, but their removal method may not be humane or even legal. Fox 2's Andy Banker explains from Overland. Workers say two geese have been blocking the entrances at the doors of the state office complex on Page in Overland all week. And while they're not happy about that, they're also not happy about this. They say someone took the eggs from the nest that the geese are here protecting. And obviously, that's not making the geese go away. And at this point, it may be past time to bring out devices like the Goosenator, which is used to repeatedly shoo geese away and keep them from coming back. The geese are now living outside the Missouri Gaming Commission office. A couple of days ago, they were near the doors of the Department of Social Services. Workers say there were seven eggs in this now empty nest, but someone took them and then put this large decoy over the nest which is not the way to handle the issue humanely or legally. Absolutely not. Rib Bolton is with well, Humane Goose Control, a group that helps people with Nuisance Canada geese, which have federal protection under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. He uses the gooseinator to harass them away from lakes and ponds and dogs to do the job on land. That's exactly what it'll look like. In mating season, he replaces the real eggs in the nest with wooden ones, which he'll retrieve That's around cool. the time they would be hatching. That's the easiest, safest, and most humane way. Um, that way you're, you're breaking the cycle of when the geese uh, become sexually mature, they're coming back to that same spot. He says man has created the perfect habitat with ponds dotting short lawn neighborhoods and business parks. Male geese can be aggressive when protecting nests. If the geese become an issue, as with the state offices, you can legally dispose of their eggs, provided you apply for what's called a depredation order with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. You must document your activity and submit it back to Fish and Wildlife. You have to uh, go online and register the property. Um, it's, it's free and they don't turn you down or anything. Then you collect the eggs. You can also hire a service like Bolton. The spokesman confirms state maintenance workers put out the decoys, but says they did not remove the eggs. They're still looking into who took them. Andy Banker, Fox 2 News.
It's 9.09. Let's head out to the Lakeside Renovation and Design Weather Deck with meteorologist Lynn Trong. A lot of people got a lot of plans this weekend. How should they dress? Mm, it's going to be a bit on the cool side throughout the weekend, Kim, but at least the sun will be out, so that's the good news. It's been a while since we've seen that sunshine around here, around the Bi-State. So as we take you outside right now here in the Lakeside Renovation Design Weather Deck, lots of clouds out here this morning, but we are going to see some sunshine later on this afternoon, so that's the good news. Temperature wise, it's a chilly out here, 30s and 40s across the by state at the 9 o'clock hours. We take you to our renew to Moscow Mills from our Renewal by Anderson webcam. It's 42 degrees in St. Louis right now. Winds out of the northwest at 15 miles an hour, gusting up to 26 miles an hour. So already pretty windy out there with a wind chill of 35 degrees. So it's feeling a lot uh, cooler because of the strong winds. And notice here in Moscow Mills, the flags are getting a bit of a workout this morning. It's going to stay that way throughout the day today, but at least we don't have to deal with that rain like we have been dealing with since Tuesday. So a dry day today but on the chilly side the only thing that we have to worry about today will be uh, the strong winds throughout the day so if you're gonna be out and about and you don't like the winds it's not gonna feel too comfortable out there today but at least it's nice and dry so take a look here in power doppler not a whole lot going on just some clouds just the the gusty winds throughout the day and uh, we are going to continue to see the gusty winds at least through saturday but it's a nice dry weekend, but it's going to be cool. Those numbers coming up in just a second. Right now out the door in Quincy at 43, 40 in Rolla, 41 degrees in Sparta and Litchfield coming in at 39 degrees. Wind speed's already up at this hour. Out of the west in St. Charles at 13 miles an hour. Stronger in Litchfield at 17 miles an hour. And as you just saw there on our map, uh, St. Louis reporting wind gusts up to 26 miles per hour. And the wind gusts anywhere from 25 up to 30 miles an hour throughout the day today. Today. Here we go on the taking a look here at the big picture. We are just dealing with lots of clouds out there this morning, but we are expecting some sunshine later on this afternoon as this cloud deck moves off towards the east here. So a dry day today, windy at times and highs back into the normal range. It was cool yesterday, 46 degrees. Today we're going to top out into the upper 50s to lower 60s across the by state. So milder, but on the windy side. And notice this cold front to our northwest here. That's going to be sliding on through throughout the day today. And we're going to feel the effect of this cold front by this weekend. So it's going to be a cool weekend, but we'll have lots of sunshine. Uh, temperatures look like this by this afternoon, mid to upper 50s, uh, lower 60s by 6 o'clock, uh, by 5 o'clock. So it's going to be on the more normal range on this Friday. And then tomorrow we'll drop into the upper 30s in the morning and then warm up to the lower 50s by the afternoon hours with lots of sunshine. So partly cloudy today, 60 degrees, winds out of the west of 15 to 20 miles an hour, guessing up to 30. Belleville, you'll see a high of 60. Little cooler here in Perryville at 50. 9 degrees and 55 degrees as we head out towards Mount Vernon. Overnight temperatures dropping into the mid to upper 30s across the region. Winds a, a little lighter, but still a bit on the strong side. Uh, in the morning, it's going to create that wind chill value, so it's going to feel a lot cooler than the upper 30s with the wind around 10 to 15 miles an hour. We'll warm up into the lower 50s by the afternoon time. Bright sunny skies all weekend long, but the winds will be strong once again on Saturday. Wind gusts expected up, to, up around 30 miles an hour. Hour. We'll lose that wind on Sunday, so that's the good news. A more comfortable day to be outdoors with lots of sunshine. Lower 50s, and then by Monday, more clouds around 67 degrees. Take a look at Tuesday, 75. That's going to be the warmest day of the week and remaining dry as of now. And then we have a chance of some showers and thunderstorms by Wednesday. High of 68 degrees and drier and a little cooler Thursday and Friday with highs in the low 60s. All right, thank you so much, Lynn. Coming up on Fox 2 News at 9 a.m., St. Louis welcomed many Afghan refugees last year, but those survivors still need help settling into their new lives. This and more on what you are doing about it.
It's time to see what your neighbors are doing to help us all. Our area welcomes survivors of wars and persecution from all over the world. Some of us even open our homes to refugees, but even if you can't, you can still help. Here is what you are doing about it. Last year, thousands of Afghans left their homes forever before the Taliban took over. Many of those survivors moved here to the St. Louis area. They need help with housing, work, visas, food, education, and more. The International Institute has a full list of resources for those families and for you. Also, much of that information is translated into Dari and Pashto. Get the link on IISTL.org. Well, there are lots of online fundraisers for survivors from Ukraine, but how do you know your money will actually reach those survivors? The United Nations Foundation is getting that money groups, getting that money to groups helping survivors on the ground. Find more information at unfoundation.org. And a tasty reminder for a happy hour today. Fast food restaurants know veggie eaters love a good cheat day too. Well, future food will serve up plant-based junk food. They will have different types of so-called chicken sandwiches and loaded fries. It will be today from 4 until 8 p.m. at Second Shift Brewing. That's on Sublet Avenue, just south of Manchester in West St. Louis. Get more information on Facebook at Future Food. And that's what you are doing about it. Well, a tasty event returns this weekend. It's the Schlafly Annual Stout and Oyster Festival. It's back at the Schlafly Tap Room on Locust Street. The festival begins tonight from 5 to 9, then picks back up tomorrow from 11 to 9. The event is the largest of its kind in the Midwest. They fly in more than 80,000 oysters from both coasts. Schlafly also brews more than 15 stouts that can only be found at the festival. You do not need a ticket to attend, just show up. It's 919 right now and coming up after weather, world leaders gather in Brussels while the war in Ukraine rages on. What President Biden had to say about supporting the Ukrainian people.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to you. We made it to the end of the work week, and things are starting off dry this morning, so that's uh, something different for today. It's been wet the last couple of days today. Just lots of clouds out there, but it's still on a chilly side this morning at this 9 o'clock hour. 44 degrees right now with a wind chill of 37 degrees, so if you're going to be heading out and about pretty soon, just grab that extra layer as you head out. 43 degrees in St. Charles, 44 in Hazelwood, 40 degrees in Collinsville, Sunset Hills 41, 40 degrees at Park Hills and out the door in Rolla at 40 degrees. Wind speeds, uh, they're up this morning out of the west at 13 miles an hour in St. Charles, 14 in Alton, 12 in Litchfield, and the winds are going to be on the strong side throughout the day today. We are expecting wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour, but at least it's going to be dry. We are 4 degrees warmer this morning compared to yesterday at this time in St. Louis. Same story in Rolla, and overall it's just going to be a warmer a day across uh, many spots in the mid west here so that's the good news it's been chilly it's been damp the last couple of days and today we're looking at drier conditions on this friday take a look here at the big picture not a whole lot going on just lots of cloud cover around this morning but we are expecting partly cloudy skies later on today and the winds will be strong so if you don't like the wind maybe not the best day to be outside but if you don't mind it it should be fine but we do have some cooler temperatures on the way for the weekend with this cold front that's still sitting to our northwest here and that's going to be sliding in throughout the day and we're going to feel the the effects of it by this weekend today no issues out there we'll have partly cloudy skies and temperatures will be in the mid of 50s across many spots here around lunchtime then warming up into the upper 50s to lower 60s this afternoon so back to the more normal range for this time of year it was only 46 degrees yesterday today we're going to top out around 60 in st louis we'll drop into the upper 30s tonight and tomorrow it's going to be a Chilly start to your Saturday. Winds out of the northwest around 10 to 15, so they will, there will be a wind chill first thing tomorrow. And it's going to be a cool day, but at least there will be sunshine. 37 degrees tonight, partly cloudy skies. And here's a look at your seven-day forecast. A pretty nice-looking weekend, lots of sunshine both days. It's going to be cool. Highs only in the lower 50s. It's going to be windy once again tomorrow, so just keep that in mind if you are going to be out and about. I know a lot of events going on this weekend, so just watch out for that. Just bundle up on Saturday. A more comfortable day to be outdoors on Sunday. We'll have less wind by then. Monday, partly cloudy sky, 67 degrees, and warm day on Tuesday, 75. So that's going to be the warmest day of the week. And then we have a chance of showers and thunderstorms by Wednesday. Lynn, thank you so much. Russian forces fired two missiles at a Ukrainian military unit that was in Dnipro in east central Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Biden meets with the European Commission president this morning in Brussels. Then he heads for Poland. Basil John is in our Washington, D.C. bureau. He reports European allies promised more aid to Ukraine. President Biden spoke after summit meetings with the European Union, G7 partners and NATO allies, and he gave Russia a thorough warning. We would respond. During his trip to Brussels, President Joe Biden promised the U.S. will act if Russia uses chemical or biological weapons against Ukraine. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. The president also pledged $1 billion to humanitarian aid for Ukraine and says the U.S. will take in 100,000 refugees, but says the best thing NATO can do to stop the conflict is stand together against Putin. The single most important thing is for us to stay unified and the world continue to focus on what a brute this guy is and all the innocent people's lives are being lost and ruined and what's going on. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg echoed this sentiment. We have a responsibility uh, to uh, prevent this conflict from becoming a full-fledged war in Europe. Still, some Republicans say President Biden isn't doing enough. This president has been consistently behind the curve on this crisis. Of course, I think he helped create the crisis with his weakness towards Russia. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell supports the president's message, but believes he should also invoke the Defense Production Act to provide more military supplies to Ukraine. Of course, the most concrete way to support Ukraine is with greater commitments of lethal aid. President Biden also said he would support an effort to expel Russia from the G20 group of economies. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. It's 9.27 right now, ahead on Fox 2 News at 9 a.m. Chick-fil-A has a drive through full of cars. Now the restaurant wants to fuel up its customers and vehicles. The new use for old cooking oil. 
Now, President Biden continues his trip to Europe today, heading to Poland. I'm Doug Luzader in Washington. We'll have more on his itinerary and what he hopes to accomplish. Coming up. The Missouri Senate has passed legislation they've been working on for months. I'll tell you how it could change who represents you in Congress. At 930, some Missourians could see a different representative for their district. Lawmakers are still working on a new district map. This work triggered high tensions for the past three months. Our Missouri Chief Capitol Bureau reporter Emily Manley gives us a look. Missouri is one of the last states in the country to pass a new congressional map, and the work still isn't done. It's something that has to be completed every 10 years because of the census. Thursday, the Senate approved its version, breaking a multi-week gridlock and possibly preventing more lawsuits against the state. I do think there was a sense of urgency, and I think being here um, overnight and, and you know sacrificing a, a good night's sleep at home is... is Sometimes you just got to do it. Working overnight. Right now, as I've been awake for 30 hours, it feels like everything is strained right now. To get a constitutional job done. Unless the federal ma federal uh, courts were going to draw the map for us, this was probably the best we were going to get. The Senate started debating a map back in January after the House passed their version. But senators didn't like what representatives approved. It's not any great secret that St. Charles split was a pretty... Um, big, big source of contention, amongst other things. Tuesday is the final day to file to run in the August primary, which means those running for Congress don't know the exact lines of their districts. Probably about midnight of last night, where you actually had uh, about a dozen senators in the same room looking at a big screen with a map on it. Already two lawsuits have been filed against the state, and more could be on the way if there's no map. The taxpayers have put us here to do a job. And whatever that job might be, if it's, especially if it's a constitutional requirement, we should do that job. The Senate's version is similar to what's already in effect. Six Republican and two Democrat. 
keeping the two military bases in the same district, putting more of St. Charles County in the same district, and leaving the Democratic seat in Jackson County. I think it's a good product. Um, it is absolutely a map that a lot of people don't love. Um, which was the only way that this was going the thing was going to get done. With the job of drawing a map behind them, emotions are still raw. I don't believe that, that anyone should take from this that this was a healing week or that this is a healing moment in the Senate. The map now goes back to the House to approve the changes. The representative spearheading the legislation tells me there's an urgency to get it done before candidate filing closes Tuesday, but he first needs to make sure they have the votes to pass it. Reporting for our Missouri Capitol Bureau, I'm Emily Manley. A man is dead this morning after a crash. It was just after 1030 last night. That crash happened on I-255 near I-64 in St. Clair County, Illinois. Police say the man hit a concrete barrier and his car caught on fire. And a man and woman were shot and killed overnight in downtown St. Louis. That was just after 2 this morning. Police say they were found inside the couple station apartment. That's on Spruce Street at South 10th Street. No word of any arrests. Another man was shot and killed overnight. That shooting happened just before 11 last night. It was on Theobald Street at Church Drive in Baden. We're working to get more information from police. In other news, we're used to potholes in the streets, but not sinkholes and not in the sidewalk. Well, there's one in downtown St. Louis. This is in Memorial Plaza at North 18th Street and Market Street. That's just across from the post office. Inspectors say it may be up to 50 feet deep. Residents continue to leave St. Louis City. That is according to new Census Bureau numbers. The city's population fell below 300,000 in 2021. The, neighbors, the numbers draw another call to focus on inclusive economic growth. Your national headlines now. The war in Ukraine is now in its second month, and President Biden arrives in Poland today to support European allies. Fox News correspondent Doug Luzeda reports Russian forces may be running out of munitions. Now, there are reports that Russia is running out of munitions, Ukrainians are running low on food, and Europe could face an energy crisis. President Biden meeting this morning with the president of the European Commission and trying to reduce Europe's reliance on Russian energy sources, and the U.S. will play a role. It's not only the right thing to do from a moral standpoint, it's going to put us on a much stronger strategic footing. The odds may still be against Ukraine, but Russian forces have been pushed back in some areas, and even some Russian ships have now become targets. Reuters is reporting that Russia is running out of precision-guided munitions. The president travels to Poland today to meet with U.S. troops and perhaps see firsthand the impact of the Ukrainian refugee crisis. He's announcing new Russian sanctions, but had a heated exchange when he was asked about the impact. Sir, deterrence didn't work. What makes you think Vladimir Putin will alter course based on the action you've taken today? Let's get something straight. You remember, if you covered me from the very beginning, I did not say that, in fact, the sanctions would deter him. You're playing a game with me. A surprising statement because administration officials from the vice president on down have repeatedly said that sanctions were meant to deter Putin. And is the White House quietly urging Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to come to terms with Russia? I have it on excellent sources that for more than a week now, the Biden administration has been putting pressure on President Zelensky to cut a deal. And that is shameful. And the president, meantime, with a stern warning if Russia uses chemical weapons. It would trigger a response in kind. Now, the White House has not clarified what exactly the president meant by that, responding in kind to chemical weapons. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. The Senate Judiciary Committee wraps up confirmation hearings. This is on the nomination of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson to the U.S. Supreme Court. The committee plans to vote on the nomination April 4th. Republicans pressed Jackson on her sentencing of child sex abusers. Three Republicans joined Democrats last year to confirm her for the Washington Court of Appeals. Now one of them was Senator Lindsey Graham, but he is now skeptical of her background. Democrats feel Jackson's confirmation, though, is virtually assured. Fire damages several seats at Mile High Stadium. This is the home of the Denver Broncos. Investigators think the fire started in a fourth level suite, then spread to the seats below. Sprinklers were supposed to put out the fire, but firefighters needed to finish that job. In today's Health Watch, drinking coffee could add years to your life. 
That's according to recent studies involving hundreds of thousands of people. Those who drank two to three cups of coffee a day had a 10 to 15 percent lower risk of developing heart problems. Researchers will present their findings to the American College of Cardiology. The group will have their annual scientific session in April. In today's biz buzz, Chick-fil-A wants to turn dirty oil into cleaner fuel. The famous restaurant is working with Darling Ingredients Incorporated. They turned its used cooking oil into cleaner burning transportation fuel. Dar Pro Solutions will collect the used oil from U.S. and Canada stores. It will then take the oil to nearby processing plants. Chick-fil-A says it wants to move that venture into local communities. Researchers at the University of Essex in England found the most exciting and most boring jobs. Bad news first on a Friday. The top five most boring jobs include accounting, tax work, data analysis, banking, and cleaning. Most exciting, performing arts, science, journalism, health professions, and teaching. You can find the study in the Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin. Customers of the mobile payment app Zelle could be scam targets. Credible.com says scammers are calling, claiming payment transactions did not complete. So some customers reverse their transactions, but actually they are authorizing payment to the scammers. Credible.com recommends customers never listen to cold calls from people claiming to be banking agents. Instead, customers should call the authorized number on their debit or credit cards. Southwest did not allow it before, but soon travelers can cancel a flight. Then they can give the credit to someone else. To qualify, customers must buy the Wanna Get Away Plus fare. It is a bit more expensive, but it offers more perks. Customers can also switch flights on the day of travel at no cost as long as seats are available. This is the first new fare category Southwest offered in 15 years. It's 9.39 right now. Up next on the 9 a.m. show, you can celebrate a survivor by helping future survivors. We talk to the founder of the Empowerment Network.
is 942 and we have some breaking news right now. A report of a shooting in downtown St. Louis. Fox 2's Alla Araby joins us live with what she's learning. Alla. That's right. We are at the 9300 block of LaSalle Park Court here. I apologize. Um, we're, uh, we're responding to a shooting here. It looks like two victims were, um, one being 14 year old, a male and another was shot with, had a wound to his hand. As you can see, it's still a very much an active scene here. We've seen police going in and out of that home over there. And, uh, we've seen some counselors coming in, uh, going in as well. Again, the, um, um, Another, the other victim was taken to Barnes by a private car with an unknown condition at this time. And we are still gathering information right now. We will update you as soon as that information becomes available to us. For now, we are live in downtown St. Louis. I'm Alla Araby, Fox 2 News. All right, Alla, thank you so much. In other news, today we celebrate having a friend of Fox 2, and he's celebrating survivorship. So let's meet Melvi Shahid. He founded the Empowerment Network, and this month he celebrates 15 years of being prostate cancer free. Thank you so much for joining us, Melvi. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Well, you've been talking about prostate cancer here on our show for years. You supported our late chief photographer, Steve Myers. He lost his fight with the disease, but you helped him fight. We're grateful for that. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what it was like helping him through that process? Oh, Steve was a great guy. He was a great guy. He was really my best friend at the Empowerment Network. Uh, he sat on our board of directors, and Steve was just a big part of the, the cancer organization. He was a big part of our support group. He was there to support some of the new survivors as they came through the doors of the Empowerment Network, and I miss him dearly. Well, we miss him too, for sure. We appreciate everything you did to make him stronger while he was still with us. As for you, how are you feeling today? I feel great. I feel great. I, I'm blessed. I'm honored. I'm humbled uh, uh, that you would invite me on this morning to talk about a great celebration that started March 1st. Well, what was it like 15 years ago when you were finally able to ring that bell? Well, it, it, when, the, when the diagnosis first started, Kim, I was I was in a state of shock. I was in a state of shock when it first started. But I made a covenant with the creator that if he would heal my body and uh, and restore my health, that I would spend the rest of my life educating men from this disease. I was only given two years to live when I was diagnosed with, with prostate cancer. So after the diagnosis, I hit the ground running. Uh, my late co-founder, Isidore Wayne and myself in 2008, we started this organization called the Empowerment Network. And one of the first major programs that we brought to St. Louis was our support group. Well, your group has gone worldwide. You have a member who reached out to you from Ireland. How can the community help warriors in the Empowerment Network? You have a special fundraiser this month. Yes, we do. You know, I'm proud to announce, Kim, that I am celebrating 15 years of being prostate cancer free. So I'm asked to St. Louis to help me celebrate this milestone. I'm asking my friends to make a special donation of $15 to my favorite chair, the Empowerment Network, Inc. And that's only $1, $1 for every year of my survivorship. Uh, like I said, the Empowerment Network is a 501c3 prostate cancer organization. And your donation will help to keep the doors of our cancer information and educational center open. That center was the recipient of the 2011 Dr. Harold P. Friedman Award from the American Cancer Society. You can simply just go on TENSTL.org uh, and click on the link and uh, 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 go to the donation tab and make a donation or you can drop a check in the mail to uh, the Empowerment Network, 6000 West Florissant, 63136. All right, everybody, we will have a link so you can give or get help if you need. It will be at fox2now.com. Melvi Shahi, congratulations. Thank you, Kim. And thank you to all my friends there at Fox 2 News. We appreciate you. And we'll be right back with more Fox 2 News, 9 a.m.